Deep In series, where we're going to be looking at what is Deep In, why it matters, and how to assess Deep In projects, or more specifically, how we at Future Networks assess projects before we invest in them. Now, I assume that most people watching this video know what Deep In is already, but I'm going to give a quick breakdown for those who don't. So Deep In stands for Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Network. So to break that down, it's a network of physical devices, or think hardware, a network of hardware devices which get built by incentivizing people to buy the hardware, deploy it in return for earning crypto tokens. So deep in projects are all built on the blockchain and involve a native crypto asset, which, as I said, is what um, is used to pay the people who build the network. So to use an example, HiveMapper is a great example. Um, it's a network of dash cams. So that's the physical bit of it. That's the hardware, the dash cams, which go in people's cars. As people drive around, they're collecting imagery, which is then uploaded to HiveMapper, the company behind it. Um, and HiveMapper are using that imagery to build a map. So the physical devices of the dash cams are what forms the network and the users are incentivized to buy the dash cam and put it in their car because they earn the honey token in return for providing that uh, coverage and uploading the data. Not all projects actually um, create their own hardware as well. They can use existing hardware such as the smartphones in our pocket. We're all walking around with mini computers uh, on us all the time. So an amazing example of that, which I came across this morning, is Silencio. So it's a deep in project. You download the app onto your phone and what it does is monitor noise levels in your area. So the result of that is going to be a noise map. So you can open the map and see where the noisiest and quietest areas, where the most and the least noise pollution is. I'll do another video on that in the future. But you get the impression. Hardware distributed all over the place, which forms a network. Users who build the network are incentivized by crypto tokens. The first deep in project to really take off was Helium. So that was creating a mesh network of long range radio signals, um, which is used to transfer data as an alternative to sort of 3G, 4G, 5G. And now we've got loads and loads of new projects appearing all the time in this really fast growing sector of the crypto economy. So why does deep in matter? And as Future Networks, as a company, why is it that we're focusing on the deep in space? So this idea of incentivizing people to buy your hardware and deploy it and maintain the network for you using the crypto token is an amazing way to kickstart the business. Imagine, so again, using HiveMapper as, as an example, the alternative out there right now is Google Maps, right? So they are using um, the, you might have seen them before, the Google cars with 360 degree cameras on the top of them. They have to buy the cars and pay for themselves, Google do. They have to pay people to get into the cars and map for them. So it's a very costly process. And basically setting up any massive network, particularly when it comes to hardware, is very expensive to do. You have to pay to produce the equipment, to deploy it, to maintain it. But when you add the crypto token in there as an incentive, it's allowing companies to launch these really cool ideas without having tens of millions of dollars of funding. If I'm buying one of HiveMapper's dash cams and I know that I'm going to be earning the token, that's almost like me having a share in the company. Because I know that if three or four years down the line, the uh, company is successful, they build a great product and they're able to get loads of other businesses using and consuming their map then they're going to be making lots of revenue that gets fed back into the token. And so the crypto that I'm mining now is going to be worth a lot more in the future. And so me as a builder of the network, that is the risk that I'm taking. Obviously, it might be a complete failure and the crypto will be worth nothing in two years, three years time down the line. But if it's in that way that you almost own a part of um, the company when you earn the crypto tokens. And many projects also give voting uh, and governance rights to, to token holders. So it is putting ownership into the hands of the people that build the network and giving token owners the uh, possibility to influence the direction in which the company is going as well. So as I said, it's a powerful way to kickstart a business without having millions and millions of dollars in funding, which allows these newer companies to compete in industries that were traditionally monopolized. So the mapping industry is monopolized by Google Maps. The telecom industry is monopolized by um, the, the major telecommunications companies. And competition within these monopolized sectors can really drive innovation. And the other reason why it matters is because we're super, super early to this deep in space. There are tons of projects appearing all the time and everybody in the deep in space right now has the opportunity to be an early community member of these projects and to benefit from the future success of these projects by owning the token. And perhaps most importantly, most of these decentralized networks are huge experiments that have never been done before. So it's hugely innovative new technology. It's really fun to be a part of, and they often have thriving communities, which just make it really fun to be involved with the projects. So why are we doing this video series on the deep in space at all? Um, so at Future Networks, what we do is we buy deep in hardware and deploy it en masse. 
So this gives us a relatively unique perspective on all the different projects, how to assess um, their viability, how to assess how long it's going to take before you get your money back, so time to ROI on the devices. And because we're deploying so many of them, we have quite a large data set to, uh, to go off as well. And we want to share all of the insights that we're getting on a daily basis with you, which is going to help you guys to decide which projects you might want to get into, whether it's just for yourself or whether you're considering building out a small fleet of units as well. And in general, just to bring more attention to the deep in space, this awesome sector of the crypto economy. And so let's get into the final part of this video, how to assess the different deep in projects, the criteria that we're using. So the criteria that we're assessing these projects by, this isn't a totally exhaustive list, but it kind of breaks down the most important points uh, that we look for. So first of all, long-term project viability, this is probably the most important factor. So what is the, gener the, the revenue generation model of the company? What's the potential for that company to be successful in generating revenues in the long term? So basically how viable is the business model? Um, and then looking at the team and the investors, seeing how credible they are as well. Um, obviously, the team is going to be a huge factor in uh, whether or not the, the project is a success. Then we have the tokenomics or the token economics of the project. So how does value actually accrue to the token as revenue is generated? Is that value getting fed back into the token, a.k.a. are the token holders benefiting from the growth and success of the company? Are the tokenomics um, super inflationary? Um, AKA are loads and loads of tokens being emitted um, on a daily basis, um, which could potentially drive the price uh, all the way down if the market's being flooded with these tokens. Is it deflationary? Do they have a, a way of, I don't know, burning the tokens, for example, built into the tokenomics? And is there a vesting schedule for the project's team and their investors? Um, if so, is it all vesting at one time? Let's say, I don't know, two years down the line, both the team and the investors have loads and loads of tokens that they're ready to dump on the market. That's going to cause quite a big drop in the price as well. So looking at that vesting schedule is quite important. Um, and really important is the community allocation as well. So let's say, I don't know, for, for ease of maths, um, there's a project that has a maximum supply of 100 tokens. If only 1% or one token is split between um, the entire community in the form of rewards, then it's probably not the most attractive um, project to get into. Whereas if there's 60, 70, 80, 90, 95, up to 100% um, going towards the community, um, that's going to make it a far more attractive project to get into as a uh, hardware um, investor. So ROI or return on investment um, on the cost of the devices. So I guess, first of all, you have the time perspective. So what's the return on your time that you're getting back? Let's say uh, a device is really difficult to set up and to keep online. Um, your time's got to be taken into account. So ease of use is quite important there. And then also the financials, the monetary uh, time to ROI. So how much is this device yielding on a daily, weekly, monthly basis compared to how much you bought it for? How much is that fluctuating over time as well is going to determine how risky of an investment this is. And then loads of other factors depending on the project. Some of them would be the delivery lead time, there's been some projects where there's been really long times between putting the order in and actually getting the equipment delivered. Um, community sentiment and engagement, does it have a thriving community of really um, motivated uh, people behind it? And just overall awesomeness, sorry, it's a bit of a cringy term, but basically how, how interested in this project are you? Is it something that you'd actually want to take part in? Does it excite you? Is it like an awesome idea uh, that you can't wait to see uh, be developed further? So you can consider this a, a general framework um, for assessing the projects. And, and this is the criteria that we're going to be using in our future videos when we're assessing each project individually. So that's it for video number one. Stay tuned for the other videos. As ever, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, if you want to get a notification when the next video comes out. And in the next one, we're going to be breaking down our first deep in project and doing a full assessment into it. See you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,